Dr. Ibrahim Harvey has written an opinion piece titled Malema Displays Pathetic Ignorance on Putin, Russia's History and Ukraine Invasion. It comes after EFF leader Julius Malema made utterances that the Red Berets would support anything meant to curb and weaken the power of Western imperialism. Political analyst and author Dr. Harvey says Malema's views are narrow and to say the least dangerous. Dr. Harvey joins us now for more on his opinion piece. Dr. Harvey, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Now, what do you believe yeah. that the EFF leader's um, opinion makes it ill-informed? Well, uh, ill-informed in various respects, man, uh, and I try and uh, explain uh, why I penned that piece. Uh, I mean, uh, Malema, you know, often... Uh, you know, just shoots off his mouth without knowing what he's speaking about, really. He has no grasp of uh, Putin. He's got no grasp of the, South uh, the Russian Revolution and uh, the collapse of the Stalinist Empire, 1991, what happened, and the position of Putin. Putin has uh, been a KGB agent, and you look at the relationship uh, between uh, KGB and the, you know, uh, Russian Stalinist Empire. There are a lot of things, but... Uh, you know, the gist of it was that uh, his comments about, you know, <laughs> I think very dramatic, not even the ANC has done that. They will <laughs> he'll go to the airport, you know, and fetch Putin and no one will do him anything, etc. Uh, you know, despite him having a warrant of arrest with the International Criminal Court of Justice, you know. Um, but uh, it's a, he takes his cue from the ANC. I mean, the ANC hasn't been as dramatic as he has been about saying they're going to fetch him at the airport and, you know, defy this uh, arrest and, and, and so on. But um, I, I, I penned the piece because I thought it was an important uh, uh, need to make a public statement, you know, that takes issue with Malema's understanding, very naive. Uh, obviously, there's the BRICS issue, the trade relations, you know, but... Um, you know, it's just uh, very unfortunate how South Africa, and I think uh, it's informed how Malema, although he's got a lot of issues with the ANC, I think uh, Malema's take on Putin and the uh, question of, uh, you know, him coming to South Africa with the BRICS thing is very similar, except that, uh, you know, they've gone so far as to say that they will escort him from the airport and he'll be safe and no one will arrest him, etc., you know. Mm. But there are serious issues, really, that, uh, you know, the public has to. It's the reason why I penned uh, that column, you know. I only pen a column when there are burning issues that I think the column should address, you know. Right. And, uh, yeah, but he's got no understanding of Putin's, Putin's history, the history of Russia and, you know, the collapse of Stalinism, and uh, I think it's got to do with the ANC, you know, that provided support for, for I mean, the Soviet Union then, uh, for the ANC, the military struggle, a lot of the people studied in Moscow, etc. So there's those old historical ties, but what has happened, you know, there's no way you can justify what Putin and Russian, uh, the military invasion of uh, of Ukraine has done, you know, since uh, February last year. It's never happened before, not even during the first, second world war has a country been bombed and pounded and virtually destroyed as, uh, you know, you, the Ukraine has uh, as a result of Putin's order, you know, mm. um, that there be this uh, military uh, invasion of the country, you know, and, and look at the utter devastation. The, uh, Ukraine is destroyed. <laughs> it's basically destroyed. Yes. There's hardly any urban infrastructure left, you know. Most certainly. But what you do agree with the EFF leader, Dr. Harvey, is the fact that the invasion of Ukraine is not isolated to Putin's desire to destroy his neighbors, but also the conflict being fueled by NATO and the United States um, in creating that geopolitical situation. Yes, but you see, uh, the, 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 you know this old saying, let me tell you, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. It's derived from a highly simplistic view of politics. You know, the world today is constantly moving, mutating, it's very complex, the situation there. No, I stated in the column very clearly because I knew there would be people who would want to uh, put that kind of question, you know. Uh, I've not uh, at all uh, 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 said that uh, the United States especially, you know, which is the heart of NATO, 
You know, NATO is basically United States mainly, you know, the main power of NATO is United States. And, and the United States has done a lot of things, you know, that, uh, you know, is uh, terrible, actually, foreign relations and, you know, what they've done to other countries, Iraq, etc. But I'll tell you something. There is no way you can talk about anything and what the United States and Western imperialism has done in other countries, i.e. Iraq, etc. But it's, it provides no justification whatsoever to my mind. I mean, several million people had to flee their homes, children, babies into Poland and neighboring countries. It's never happened before. The, the country is virtually destroyed, you know. And uh, I don't think Malema addresses concretely what has happened, you know, especially from uh, 2014, you know, in that region. Um, so I'm not uh, blind at all whatsoever to, to the role of the uh, United States and imperialism. In fact, in stoking the situation there, but the way Putin and Russia reacted to go in and virtually destroy uh, the Ukraine, that is the heart of my, my problem, you know. It's an entirely disproportionate retaliation which has virtually destroyed Ukraine. Mm. And you're talking about the ordinary people. I mean, forget about the leadership and whatever you want to say about the Ukrainian leader. The bulk of the people, the working class, ordinary people have been driven out of that country. Their homes, hospitals, everything has been destroyed in Ukraine. I mean, Doctor, you speak earlier on about Malema's obviously um, knowledge that he has or the, the closeness that he would have to Russia because of the Soviet Union and what they had done for the liberation struggle with the ANC back then. But do you truly believe that his utterances are, are ill-informed and misinformed or could this be a way of trying to create a narrative around Russia and Ukraine and the stance of then the EFF towards that narrative? No, it's obviously their own take, but it's ill-informed because, I mean, the way you have to look at Putin, you've got to look at what has happened to Putin, you know, and when Putin took uh, office, you know, uh, uh, and what has happened and how Putin resumed power in 2012 when he made a comeback. And under what circumstances, you know, I don't want to go into nobody. Go, the Google is there, brilliant uh, place to go and do research on Putin and how he, t he took uh, power again in 2012 and what has happened. What has happened uh, in, in Russia? Oh, man, I mean, there's too much to be said, you know, under Putin's rule, you know, and, and the restoration of capitalism in Russia and how the elite, and a tiny elite has benefited. You know, go and look at the mass of people. Often you have foreign news agencies interviewing people in Russia who say that they long for the old days, no matter what uh, Stalinism, but what has happened, you know, with the collapse of, of the uh, Soviet Empire and the restoration of capitalist relations in the Soviet Union, former Soviet Union, has been to the disadvantage of ordinary people who, st who speak yearningly for those old days, you know, because of how life has been and how hard it has been and the cost of living and everything that has happened. People don't address these things and how uh, Putin has dealt with opposition in, in, in Russia. I mean, there are scary stories about how people have disappeared and how people are jailed and, you know, highly, how highly authoritarian, which is the hallmark of Stalinist politics, really. There's no civil society that's allowed, you know. Russia is a very repressive society. So I, I, I just think... Uh, uh, Malema's take on Putin and Russia and the history of Russia, you know, which I attempt to go into in the column. I mean, he, he seems to have no <laughs> inkling of that history whatsoever, you know. So he sees Putin as a big hero and without uh, a context of what really has happened in Russia, you know, and I needed to take issue with that. And that's why I devoted the column to that, you know. But today you can't separate how the ANC government has dealt with this issue, you know, and their refusal to take a stand in the United Nations. I mean, the late uh, Eusebius Mercator, you know, he penned a piece a week or two ago slamming this non-alignment stance of the ANC and basically saying, what are you talking about, you know? Other countries, you know, they took a stand in the United Nations against the party. Look at those lessons and then you look at what the ANC government has done now in relation to what has happened in Ukraine. It's entirely disproportionate. And Eusebius Mercasia slammed the ANC government for their attempt to claim that their stance 
springs from uh, the politics of non-alignment, you know. It's really a farce, you know. And uh, I, I mean, uh, I don't think Malema even goes into those issues, really, of the contradictions of uh, a claim to non-alignment. It's nonsense, you know. I mean, the countries took a stand on, uh, against the party. There was no non-alignment. And what we have now in Russia is a huge issue. I mean, it's never happened in Europe before. What has happened to, to, to Ukraine at the hands of, uh, of the, you know, the Russian army? It's just uh, unheard of. The destruction is absolutely incredible. Mm. And I mean, you know, uh, you can hear me feeling a bit <laughs> emotional about it. Uh, this is what, uh, I mean, I, I think Malema is just very naive about Putin and what has happened in Ukraine and so on, you know. Um, yeah. Right. Dr. Harvey, I mean, speaking on the, on the issue of the ANC not taking a stance, many others have argued that the ANC not taking a stance and rather taking a stance for peace is taking a stance. Well, you know, it's a very perilous peace. What peace are you talking? Putin has virtually destroyed Ukraine. What peace are you talking about? That is where peace should have been built. The, the problems that Putin had with Ukraine and what had happened should have been dealt in other ways. In fact, Putin violated the United Nations. Go and look at the United Nations Charter. That's why uh, America, etc. said, why did you not use the United Nations channels? Why did you go and bomb y Ukraine to smithereens? You could have used, this was the big thing, which uh, Ramaphosa and the ANC have not even looked at. They have flouted and violated the United Nations Charter and the regulations that accompany it when you've got issues in the country. They never even used the United Nations. They're sending their troops and they virtually destroyed Ukraine. Doc, lastly, um, earlier on you mentioned the EFF saying that they're taking a vow to protect Putin should he come to the country for the BRICS summit in August. Yes. What's your stance in terms of the EFF sort of taking a stance on South Africa, not issuing or rather not executing out what the ICC had issued in terms of a warrant of arrest for Putin? No, it is right. You know, the, the, the ICC has got itself, just like America and the rest of the world, you know, a lot of contradictions in foreign policy, a lot of decisions that have been taken. You can see the minister of uh, international relations digging in a hill, in a lily pendo, a pendo and so on. But what is going to happen? I don't know if you're aware of what the developments are moving increasingly in direction where um, South Africa is basically urging that they find another venue, that Putin doesn't come to South Africa and the summit, uh, the BRICS summit is not held here, but moved to another country because, I mean, they might fear what might happen to Putin, although he's surrounded with so much security and, and so on that I don't think anything would happen. But I think uh, the ANC government, uh, well, you know, uh, Naledi Pando is saying she's sticking in uh, heels and, and she's, she's, she's totally opposed to shifting the venue. There are other people in the ANC government who, who, who tends to want to have it elsewhere, you know, because an immense pressure has built up against South Africa, you know, accepting Putin and, and hosting uh, this uh, BRICS summit in South Africa and especially having him present because He's been wanted, you know, sought uh, to be arrested, you know. Um, yeah, but there are a lot of issues around the arrest, you know. Uh, and the, uh, the, this big thing of no, uh, non-alignment, which uh, Eusebius Marchesa, you know, devoted a, 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 a column to, you know, not long ago, you know, uh, criticizing the ANC strongly for, for their stance, you know. All right. That's all the time we have this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Dr. Harvey, that Pleasure. was political analyst and author, Dr. or rather Dr. Ibrahim Harvey, speaking to us there about the EFF leaders' utterances on the Russia-Ukraine conflict as well as the history of Russia.